So if you want to go ahead and learn how you're going to set up your Facebook ads, this is the video for you. So to start setting up Facebook ads, obviously I assume that you have a business account on Facebook or a professional account on Facebook and you also have it set it up on your meta. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to my business section. Okay, I'm going to switch over to my accounts which have, you know, actual pages. And then I'm going to come here where it says ads manager and I'm going to go over to this. Okay, and also make sure to open up your meta business suite because that is where you can create the different pixels for those ads. But yeah, you can come to the ads manager section over here. And once you come here, this is where you can start creating new ads. So simply click on create. And as you can see, it takes you into load and creation. So you can start creating new campaigns for new ads. So first of all, there's buying type. Okay, so there's either reservation or auction. Okay, then there's campaign objective, it could either be to increase your awareness to increase traffic, increasing engagement, increasing leads, app promotions, sales and a whole lot more. So I'm going to go with awareness and click on continue. And once you do that, you can go ahead and add details for this ad. And uh, once you've added your details, simply click on next. And once you do that, that's going to generate the campaign for your ad in the easiest way. You want to click on the lower plus sign that is in the middle of the settings. We're clicking on the plus sign and you want to create a pin. You want to click on the pin. Then you want to select the image that you want to publish. We're going to select our thumbnail from the previous video, the title of the pin you want to create a title that is likely if not the same as the picture or the motif of the picture the theme of the picture in our case we have how to download youtube video then in the description you can actually utilize part of the title plus particular hashtags for example you can say learn how to download a YouTube video and then you can utilize the hashtags you can use as you can see there's plenty of hashtag recommendations beneath you can utilize YouTube right you can utilize something more niche for example, YouTube videos or video ideas. What is popping up as a recommendation is something that you definitely want to consider. You don't want to come up with reinventing the wheel. You are using the pins, which essentially means other people's ideas and popularity of the post or search terms. In our case, we're using YouTube and YouTube video ideas because these are the pins. This is what is popular as a topics or keywords third option is you can actually include a link for example we have a link from our video right you want to simply copy and paste your link then you can create your own board it's like a folder where you actually filter and organize your content this is something that makes sense if you actually following or focusing on only one niche or only one industry in our case we're more generic we're providing more how-to videos on different topics so we're not going to utilize this function what we're going to do next is you can actually tag a product straight if you're selling people other people are actually utilizing pinterest to sell products or services we don't have any but this is where you actually can find the function and utilize it by clicking tag products and you can actually click on the plus button and add product right if we were selling something again you don't have to post immediately the last option in the settings is that you can actually schedule the post for the next couple of days in particular time of the day right if you know your audience then the last step of course is to click create there you have it your pin was just published you just learned how to publish pins how to find the exact keywords how to create images and potentially selling products and scheduling posts so let's say i'm gonna go on github okay and i'm gonna search up maze c plus plus let's just search that up and i'm gonna write maze c plus plus and once you write that look at this you can start 
getting maze generators. Let's say we have this maze generator and this person created it in the C++, right? We're gonna go in this. So it's a recursive backtracker maze generator. And this person has, you know, explained it. So this is the maze generator. You're gonna write that and look at that. It's gonna generate a whole maze that uh, you can work in. You can walk through it. You get the dependency, you get the compiling. It gives you the whole code over here as well with the files. So, you know, you can actually get the whole code by copying it and installing it. You can go to the actual file to get the code for yourself as well. And uh, that was that is what GitHub mainly is for. So upload code, get code, and, you know, just talk with other people regarding coding. And that is basically about it. So that's GitHub. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all if you next time. Goodbye. Trello tutorial, how to use Trello. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another video. I hope you all are doing great and are having an amazing day. In this video, I'm going to be quickly showing you on how you can use Trello for yourself in the easiest and most simplest ways possible. So to do this, what you're going to do is, first of all, you're going to come to Trello.com, create an account. Now, to use Trello, what you're going to do is you're going to click on Create, and you can actually create a board. So you're going to click on Create a Board, and once you click on Create a Board, you're you know going to answer any board title for yourself and uh, get that board up and running. Now, once you get that board up and running, so let's say I've created this board for myself, right? I'm going to go straight into this board. It's going to look somewhat like this, okay? Now, how do you add things in this? So to add components, first of all, you're going to click on list and look at that. You can add lists for yourself. So, you know, it's pretty easy to add lists. Then in the lists, you can add cards and just keep on adding more cards. And to edit those cards, you're going to click on them and uh, you can change their descriptions. You can change their activity statuses and uh, you can change every other aspect of it like members, labels, checklist, dates, attachment, cover, custom fields, dependency, estimation, and all these things. You know, pretty straightforward and pretty easy stuff to get your head around. And that is how you're going to use Trello. So thank you for watching and I'll see all of you next time. Goodbye. MailChimp tutorial. Hello everyone. Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be talking about MailChimp and how you can use this absolutely incredible software. Okay. So to start off with MailChimp, what you are going to want to be doing is obviously you're going to, you know, sign up with an account. Now, what is MailChimp used for? MailChimp, in my opinion, is best for any type of email marketing that you want to, you know, do for yourself. It's great for any type of um you know sales crm it's great for lead generation it's good for your sales it's good for getting your company up and running and the best part about this is that it actually has a free platform to sign in with so you can sign up with it pretty easily okay just go into sign up for free now once you go into sign up for free it takes you into the actual sign up gig where you know add your very own business email that you want to to sign up with mailchimp let's say i'm going to add that then you have you know your username and then you can add your very own password as well. Okay. After adding your password, you're going to verify everything. And once you verify everything from there, it's going to take you into the actual, you could say, uh, work ethic and work uh, section of MailChimp. And that's basically how you're going to get started with it. Now, when it comes to using MailChimp, you are going to want to make sure to get a hold of uh, a lot of uh, you could say um, generative assistance you can convert with email automations create faster with generative ai refine with segmentation optimize with analytical things and support you can get started easily with a personalized product tour okay they give you a proper product tour and you can see you can create actual custom journeys with automations you can discover new ways to automate for yourself keep your email relevant and brand growing and the thing is that the campaigning gives you a lot of great templates to work with which is also pretty incredible and you can add as many leads as you want to get as many contacts as many customers and as many users you want in this okay and that gives you a really good general idea of how you're going to work with this that's pretty much about it thank you for watching and i'll see all of you in the next video Goodbye. Miro tutorial for beginners. Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to be quickly showing you Miro and how you can use this absolutely incredible software for yourself. Okay. So Miro is basically, as it says, a visual workspace for innovation. So Miro allows you to create these different charts. It allows you to create these different types of boards. Okay. And in those boards, you can use different elements like shapes, sticky notes, and all these other things to create a good workspace and you can also use different boards like kanban boards and all and the best part about this is that you can make a whole funnel a sales flow and like a whole lot of other things to work with so 
I would definitely urge users out there to use the software because it's absolutely incredible to get a good idea of this. And it has a lot of integrations to work with as well. So definitely go ahead with this. And I'm also going to discuss the pricings. Now, Miro also gives you things like product management, engineering. It's for IT teams, UX and design, consultation and agencies. And there's a lot of great technical diagramming, whiteboarding, wireframing, mind mapping, retrospectives, scale product planning, and process mapping. So there's a lot of great things to take from Miro. And definitely, all of you users out there should use this for yourself. It's the amazing and the most greatest thing to get for yourself. Then you have four plans for this as well. You have free starter business enterprise. Okay, so the free plan is $0. Starter plan is $8. Business plan is $16. And enterprise plan is obviously the basic typical enterprise plan. Okay. And uh, yeah, that's the general idea that you need to get when you're working with uh, something like this. And that is basically your Miro. So thank you for watching all the way till the end and I'll see all of you next time. Goodbye. Slack tutorial. Hello everyone. Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about Slack and how you can use this absolutely amazing application for yourself to, you know, do your actual workspace editing in, to manage your products, manage your tasks and keep your team up and running. So this is Slack basically. Okay. So in Slack, you're going to make a workspace. So as you can see, I'm in this workspace right now. Now in this workspace, we have channels. Okay, you create channels for yourself and you can create more channels by clicking on create a channel and, uh, you know, add any type of channel you want to. And if you want any assistance, you can do that as well. But as you can see, I have all these channels. So links, team chat, uh, you have work and all these things. So let's say in team chat, I want to, you know, I'm going to write something like, uh, hi guys. And uh, then you can actually, you know, do an at and, uh, you know, message everyone. So it's pretty easy. It's pretty simple. And uh, it's uh, really nice to get a basic idea of how you're going to work with Slack. So just create channels. And in those channels, you're going to start working. Now, if you want to invite people to your workspace, what you are going to want to be doing is you're going to go to your workspace over here. Now, whoever has control of the workspace, what you can do is you can start adding people into a certain chat. So you're going to click on add coworkers, enter their name or email, and just send them an invite. And that should be it. So that's basically the idea of Slack. Thank you for watching and I'll see all of you next time. Goodbye. Smartsheet tutorial. Hello everyone. Welcome back to another video. I hope you all are doing great and are having an amazing day. In this video, I'm going to be talking about Smartsheet and how you can use this absolutely incredible software. Okay. So Smartsheet, is basically a flexible solution for your work. Now, it's very similar to products like ClickUp, Monday.com, Asana, Trello. Now, the reason for that is that it's great for your work management, okay? It's a great management platform. It's great for task management, great for project management. Even if you want to, you know, manage your personal life, it's good for that because it gives you things like automations, digital assets, resource, team collab, dashboards, portfolio, proofing, account, intelligent workflows, integration, no-code work apps, and a whole lot more. So it gives you a whole repertoire to work with. It gives you the whole, you know, uh, you could say working standard to get your head around. And it helps you a lot in working. So do make sure to get your head wrapped around this pretty well because it's an absolutely amazing software to use. And I would urge all you users out there to get a good grasp of this, to get a good idea of this, because like products like Smartsheet will help you tons. Okay. So that's pretty much the main idea about Smartsheet. Thank you for watching and I'll see all of you next time. Goodbye. Rike tutorial. Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be quickly talking about Rike and how you can use this platform for yourself. It's one platform to streamline all workflows for you, a single app for all departments. You can manage projects, organize work, integrate all your favorite tools and collaborate and drive efficiency for yourself. So Rike is your, you know, team dashboard or team planning statement where you can actually mess around with different components of your work. Okay and uh, you can actually use Rike in a different ways. So if you've used, you know, stuff like monday.com or you've used Asana or you've used ClickUp, then Rike will also work greatly for you. And trust me, Rike works great. It has automation, it has Gantt charts, project resource planning, and it has a great visualized dashboard where you can get tasks, 
processors, and a lot more. So you can see that you can get your analytics in this section as well. And these are all the organizations that use Rike. So there's PNG, Sega, Lyft, Simons, Pfizer, Ogilvy, T-Mobile. So you know you have a lot of features and brands using these. Then you can auto-organize your intake, custom build for your teams, gain big pictures, visibility, customer success stories. You get Aerotech, Fitbit, Inspiration, all these people use it. And it has great reviews as well. So it's great to start off with it. It's great to use. And you can actually see why Rike. So it has great marketing, professional services, PMO, creative design, also has a great CMS. Uh, you get task management, workflow management, and the best thing, project management, where you can plan agile products. Now, planning projects for yourself is a different way to work as well, because you are going to want to make sure that the management works incredibly and the management works normally when you're actually getting the basic concept and basic idea of this, okay? So that's pretty much about it when it comes to Rake. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you all of you next time. Goodbye.